welcome to another round of Month in Data, in which we look at the numbers behind some of this month's trending stories. OpenAI and the National Bureau of Economic Research released what they describe as the largest study to date of how people are using ChatGPT, revealing a host of insights on how people are actually utilizing the tool. According to the study, more than 700 million people are now using ChatGPT on a weekly basis, nearly 10% of the world's adult population. Young adults, especially those between 18 and 25, are making up almost half of all users on ChatGPT. New users have been highly active, with a huge increase in the number of messages from 2024 to 2025. Interestingly, the biggest jump is seen on the non-work side of things, rising from around half of all messages in 2024 to almost three quarters in 2025. The study also shows people are mostly turning to ChatGPT for practical guidance, seeking information, or to help out with their writing. Within those categories, ChatGPT provided users with how-to advice, assisted with tutoring or teaching, as well as editing or critiquing provided text. For all the signs of growth in the OpenAI report, several headlines in September focus on talk of an AI bubble. Meta is reportedly implementing a hiring freeze, splitting up its AI superintelligence lab, and The Verge reported even Sam Altman said investors as a whole are overexcited about AI. Global trust in AI has also been decreasing, dropping from 63% in 2022 to 56% in 2024. Bubble or no, AI success has helped Alphabet, parent company of Google, join the 3 trillion club for the first time, breaking the 3 trillion US dollar market capitalization point. Alphabet reached a market capitalization of $3.05 trillion by market's close on September 15th, making it the highest valued internet company worldwide and the fourth most valuable tech company in the world, just after Nvidia, Microsoft, and Apple. The growth is driven by the success of the AI chatbot Gemini, expectations of a US Federal Reserve rate cut, and an antitrust ruling in the US that resulted in lighter than expected penalties. As a result, Google will not be forced to sell its Chrome browser, which absolutely dominates the web browser space, or its Android mobile operating system, which runs around 70% of the world's smartphones. Google still faces legal issues in Europe. The European Commission fined Google 2.95 billion euros for breaching EU antitrust rules by distorting competition in the advertising technology industry. Google already has a history of fines with the EU. So far, the two highest antitrust fines ever imposed by the EU both concern Google, with a record fine of 4.3 billion euros issued in 2018. US President Donald Trump headed to the United Kingdom in September for a second official state visit, with the trip carrying both ceremonial weight and economic intent. Overall, the UK government said it had secured £150 billion worth of US investment in Britain, coinciding with President Trump's state visit. The bulk of this will come from Blackstone over the next decade, with Microsoft pledging to spend £22 billion in the UK over the next four years, while Google will invest £5 billion over the next two years. On September 12th, the US agency Fitch Ratings lowered France's credit score from AA- to A+, signaling that they believe France's ability to meet its financial commitment has lessened. Fitch's ratings go from AAA, attributed to countries having the highest credit quality, to D for default. Ratings from agencies such as Fitch, Moody's, and Standard & Poor's allow investors and lenders to know who has the best ability to repay their debt obligations, and therefore where it is safest for them to invest. They have a great influence on a country's capacity of getting better interest rates and higher credit limits. Fitch attributed the downgrade to a number of factors, including France's ratio of national debt to GDP, one of the highest in the world, sitting between the United States and the United Kingdom. Fitch has explained France downgrading with their belief that France's debt will continue to rise, reaching 121% of GDP in 2027. The agency also cited France's political fragmentation, most notably with President Emmanuel Macron having to appoint his third prime minister in a year. That's it for this month. For more information on these stories and countless others, head over to Statista.com.